Hi, I'm Rebecca Mara, and I want to answer the question today, what are energetic implants or imprints? Uh, I feel that this is a topic that's really important for everyone to understand, and it's something that energy workers and light workers find in people's energy bodies all the time. So imagine that we come into this world perfect, innocent, um, untainted, unharmed, to some extent, we, our fields are just pure. Um, they're open, they're receptive. Our ego also hasn't exactly been developed until we start receiving mirroring from our parents. So what happens usually is that we start to come up with ideas of what our identity is based on what our parents and what kids at school tell us about ourselves. So we start out in this kind of like pure, open, um, undefined state. And if we have a parent or kids at school telling us something about ourselves, like uh, you're not good enough, or you're, you don't look okay, you're not attractive, or you're mediocre, um, that's a big cultural problem, um, or you're not precious or your, um, your voice isn't welcome here, your feelings aren't welcome. All of these actually get stored as beliefs and physical structures in the energy body. So when I'm doing energy work, I'll scan over someone's field and I'll feel something that feels um, kind of staticky. And it feels like, uh, it's almost like a, like a cord or a sliver of some kind. And what usually happens is people build some kind of protection over. So think about when you get a sliver, um, your skin will produce kind of this hard casing around it in order to um, coat it because it doesn't know how to metabolize it. It can't metabolize this foreign energy or this thing that didn't come from the self. And so it builds a layer of protection around it and it keeps it in there sometimes. So that's what we do with our uh, with these energetic imprints of defining ideas about ourselves. So let's take for example um, Your voice isn't welcome So that enters from maybe a parent into a child's energy field into the throat chakra and It stays there almost like a like an irritant and that person will create defenses around it. So they might create an energetic wall around their voice. They might create kind of like a cloud stuffing their voice because that imprint is in there um, that your voice isn't welcome. Your voice doesn't mean anything to us. So what, what we do next is we notice that there is choice. So most of us walk around with these imprints for the rest of our lives unless we do a lot of self-help work or whatever it is. Even if we mentally figure it out, we still can't create the energetic change in our body of a sense of my voice is precious, my voice is, um, I can speak my truth. Like I know how to communicate my experience. So. What we want to do is find that energy block or whatever that imprint or implant is and realize that it did not come from us, that it's not our belief, our thought, our, our actually emotion. It's something that we took on without knowing uh, who we were when we were little. So if you hear something enough from parents or culture or whatever, we take it into our field and we think that it's ours. So realizing that we have free will and choice is the first place to start. Realizing that you no longer have any power over me. I don't have to engage in the struggle or the attachment that keeps me in the loop of playing this out over and over again. I don't have to struggle with it over and over again in therapy. But what I can do is make loving contact with that energetic implant or imprint that's foreign. We're not pushing it out because if you push it out, you're in an attachment struggle again. So what we want to do is actually hold loving presence and loving space for it.
And as we do that, the energy of your voice isn't worthy no longer has anything to stick to because we're loved. And when we're loved, our voice comes out fluidly. Like think about when you're in love and your whole face melts and your heart opens and you come alive and you feel more like yourself, you feel more real. This is what I'm talking about as being our true nature. And the more that we can connect to that with a loving presence, these old energetic imprints we realize didn't come from us. We never actually chose them, but we now know that we have free will to release them. And we do that by creating this warm kind of cloud of love for our own voice and for the child that got that energetic imprint telling it that it wasn't enough. And then the warmth of that, the reconnection to the true self, doesn't give it something to stick to. So it kind of falls off, like, it just kind of melts off like butter. We don't have to fix it, we don't have to change it. Um, so working with energetic imprints and imprint, imprints is actually not a difficult process. It's a really gentle, sweet, caring, and present process. And all we're doing is supporting the field. All we're doing is giving the field, the system, um, support, love, and contact so that it doesn't have to hold on to what it thought it was always going to have to hold on to because it was so used to it. So one practice I'd like you to try out is just notice what beliefs you took on in your childhood about yourself that have been some of your main issues. And I'd like you to slow down and just do a meditation of sitting in loving presence with that experience. Realizing the wounded nature of the person that it came from and holding that with love. And then realizing the innocent part of you that didn't know any better, that took it on as though it was true. And then just sit in loving presence with your essential self, with the part that is not good or bad, that's perfect in its uh, power of presence, that part that is always a, a part of God, that's always connected, that's always loved. And just sit in that peace until these imprints dissolve. Thank you so much and have a great day.